time to play the podcast. Doo-doo. Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrestling Defenders, presented by B.5 Gaming with your hosts. It's me, Alex Lopez, with me always my buddy Grant Levron, talking about the end of round one of the Cruiserweight Classic. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, just chilling today, because you and I, Alex, we've been boys for a long time. Why are you doing this to me today? Because <laughs> I hate myself. So, we didn't do this last week, because with the brand split, I hate to venture into other stupid shit, but with the brand split, like, wrestling, there's going to be two pay-per-views a month, so this is more wrestling i got to deal with, and I need a break. I can't be watching the CWC every week, so I'm doing it every other week. That makes sense. We need, we, see, WWE doesn't appreciate that we have shit to do. We all have lives. We're a little bit busy. All right, your, your lifestyle is my hobby. Don't get a big head about it. Exactly. Then also, like not all of us can can go out at, at two a.m. and go claim gyms and and stuff. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm projecting from my Pokemon Go adventures. Speaking of Pokemon Go, we should go listings for the fucking CWC. Yeah, that horrible <laughs> intro. You're. A, I had worked very hard on that intro for the when, when I thought of it two seconds ago. Okay, so for episode three of round one, we have Jack Sabre Jr. versus Tyson Dukes. Jack Sabre Jr. is a guy who, in any other circumstance, would not be in a WWE ring. He looks so sickly. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. He looks sick. He's very, he's like scrawny. What was it like? I, I wanted to go back and look at the stats, but I kind of forgot. Was like He was six foot? Yeah, six foot, like 150. 150? That, that's a tree. That is virtually a tree versus Tyson Dukes, who was a guy who, if Vince saw him, was just, was just, just perspirating. He's sweating like all oh, Tyson Dukes. Going back to uh, to uh, Pokemon, if you know who Sudowoodo is, basically Jack, J- uh, Jack Saber Jr. looks like a human Sudowoodo. A Sudowoodo. <laughs> you need cut to uh, wake him up so you can catch him. That's that's for you, uh, Polka nerds out there who know what the fuck I'm talking about. Oh God, what does our podcast turn into? The greatest podcast. So Jack Saber Jr. won via submission. What what, what was it called again? The submission? I kind of missed it. He just looked like he's gonna break his fucking arm. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing. Was this the match where he was like working the arm the whole fucking time? Yeah, exactly. Isn't it? Like he was like basically climbing dukes and is just like oh what's this wrist i'm gonna break it off and then that was the entire match isn't it great we finally see a match where somebody works a body part and then wins with a submission for that body part i know right it's crazy it's almost like it's you know realistic even like alberto de rio for a while like the only time he like worked an arm was when he did like that weird arm code breaker thing yeah and then did the submission then he won that was actually a really surprisingly good one um i heard a lot of great things about zach sabre jr so i'm excited to see um him in the second round Next, we had Drew Gulak, representing the U.S., versus Harv Shira, representing India. Um, Harv Shira was like, well, he's the one with the brother, right? Yeah, the Bollywood boys. The Bollywood boys. The Bollywood boys. No gimmicks got over. There was only one gimmick that we'll get la- get to later. But like, if you had a gimmick, you weren't going over in the tournament. Oh, hell no. No, Harv Shira is, is, the, is the Bollywood version of um, Tyler Breeze. Basically, in, in in a nutshell, he's an Indian pretty boy. Yeah. Not too much to say, but uh, Drew Gulak won via Dragon Sleeper, which looked pretty nice. Uh, moving on, we have Anthony Bennett versus Tony Nice, both representing the the U.S. You weren't totally... Uh, immediately, you saw Anthony Bennett. You were just not into him at all. Yeah, no, because I'm sorry. If you have those 2008 Kanye glasses and you're not Sasha Banks, get the fuck off my screen. And he had two. One for his high top and one for his face. Yeah, seriously. Like, look, dude, I get it. Your hair is big. Just calm the fuck down. This was the match. Was like, I guess it was the more sloppy one. Yeah, it was definitely sloppy. Uh, you can tell Anthony Bennett was... He was pretty green, pretty new. And you just knocked the head off of my action figure. I'm so sorry. Your, your, your priceless action figure. It's not even mine. It's like my cousin's or whatever. Which is basically what uh, what uh, Tony Nese did to Anthony Bennett in this match. Ha! Oh, yeah. The, this is the 450 of death. Oh, so, yeah. So I guess he does the pump handle slam. We're not totally confirmed what was hurt. <laughs> and, uh, like, just everything was hurt. So he's like, oh, they first it said his head, and then it said his arms, and it said, like, his mid section, and then, like, his legs, like, something. The, um... Tony Nese was going to the top rope for a 450. The ref stopped him and said, wait, I got to check on him. And he checks on him. And then Tony Nese is sitting there like, okay. And the ref goes, okay, you may kill him. Yeah, yeah, you may murder him now. And then he killed him with a 450 splash and won. Basically. 
Moving on, we have the main event for episode three was Brian Kendrick versus Raul Mendez. Brian Kendrick was the most the, over. Sir, sir, I do believe it is the Brian Kendrick. My apologies. The Brian Kendrick was the most over in the, the tournament so far. That pop was louder than my ankle when I sprained it trying to, trying to do the coup de gras. That's a big pop. It's, it was a huge pop. Raul Mendez was a pretty much unknown. This match was fantastic in that both guys got over, mm-hmm. and we had a clear heel face dynamic. Definitely, that wasn't too over the top. Mm-hmm. But in a way, it's like um, Brian Kendrick, the Brian Kendrick, if you'll excuse me, is he's he's been there for a while, so he knows you know how to play up his like shit character because like they like I said, the pop was huge for him. But as the match progressed, they're booing him because he's doing these heelish things. And they they were like, you know, fuck that heel, the bad guy. We're going to root for Raul Mendez. And the guy who was unknown coming into the match was a huge fan favorite towards the end of it. And then by the end, Brian Kendrick won with a with a bully choke. Yeah, which, which is, I haven't seen in, like, years. It's, it's, a, it's essentially a rear naked choke, which doesn't really win too many matches nowadays. No, nah, not at all. Well, then again, neither, neither do, like, super kicks, but Dolph keeps winning with them nowadays because he's uh, in the title the picture. the good old super kick. The, D, the good old DDT. These, you know, these kids nowadays have no respect for the business. No respect, I tell you. They don't sell nothing. Nobody sells nothing. The economy is shit. So that was the end of episode three. We're, we're doing these like rapid fire because like, we're tired. We got shit to do. Uh, the final episode of round one for the CWC starts with Jason Lee representing Hong Kong versus Rich Swan representing the U.S. Which, by the way, I've realized something. Anybody who's already in NXT mainstay or has prepared or who has been on NXT... Probably automatically going to win. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, seriously. I was a huge fan of uh, Rich Swan. Um, I've seen him before on like you know NXT, like you said. Very entertaining guy. Very like guy like like he's very sincere smile. Like you like yeah, I like that guy. Like um, who's that one fellow that you really liked that was like super green like um a little while back? He was from the U.S. Oh, Kenneth. Uh... Kenneth Johnson. Yeah, Kenneth Johnson. If Kenneth Johnson was good, then <laughs> then then that's Rick Swan. Yeah. He's just very sincere, very, uh, seems like a nice guy. Like, the crowd was, like, super into this guy. Way over. Doing his dances, having a good time. Uh, he Basically, won- imagine a U.S. version of the Mac. Yeah, I'm, I miss the Mac. Oh, the Mac. I'm the Mac. I'm the Mac. Mac I'm, I'm the, the Mac. Mac. I'm- <laughs> Hashtag the Mac for WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Is, w- is it WWE World Champion or WWE Heavyweight Champion? I don't know. They changed the fuck. As long as it's not the Universal Champion. Fuck that. They're f- and their fake title. Jason Lee, they kept saying, like, oh, he was inspired by Bruce Lee. I, I imagined he would be, but he kept beating us over the head over it. It seemed a little racist. But just because he's Asian doesn't mean he idolizes Bruce Lee. I liked his facial expressions. Oh, yeah, they were just quite like, entertaining. Like, who the fuck is this dude? Why is he dancing? And, like, when they did the handshake, Rich did, like, a spin Michael Jackson thing. And, like, and like Jason was just like, I don't know what the fuck this voodoo magic is. Basically, imagine Nicolas Cage versus uh, Michael Jackson in a wrestling match. Basically, oh, that'd be fantastic. Oh, God, that'd be... Not the bees! Not the bees. Um, Rich Swan won with a standing 450. Holy shit. Which is a pretty fucking awesome move. It's super impressive. No one... Like, why... Like, why, why do we have a need for a guy like Apollo Crews? Because he's bigger. But when you have a guy like Rich Swan who connects with the people instantly... Because McMahon likes... Protein and steroids, and I don't know. I don't understand this wrestling business anymore. Moving on, we have Noam Dar representing Scotland and Israel. He's got a two for there versus Garv Shira, um, brother to Harv Shira. Like I said, if you're if you have a gimmick or you're Indian, you ain't going over. And also, they neglected to say how Noam Dar is a was a former number one contender for the ROH title. I'm not gonna bring that up. They bring up ROH for everybody else. They brought up ROH for CM Punk. That like what was it like five years ago, three years and, ago? And, and and other people. Like who? Like They never brought it up for for Samoa Joe for when he was there for a while. They they brought it up for Daniel Bryan for a bit. Exactly, Daniel Bryan. Boom. I was right. <laughs> the, the one example. You played yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. Um Noam Dar won with a knee bar. This one was kind of really forgettable. Yeah, seriously. And it was like, not, not that it was bad. I wouldn't classify it as bad. It was just like nothing was really like... They probably have more for Noam Dar in the future. Maybe. Which is probably not now. And then we got to Jack Gallagher from England versus Fabian 
what Ackner? Yeah. Ackner. From Italy. I don't believe this dude's from Italy. Yeah, no, he's fucking not with that German ass last name. Yeah. I was like well, no, they they mentioned it like as soon as I said it when we were watching, like his grandmother's from Germany or, or something like that, right? Something like that. Who, Some, who the hell knows? Who, but but basically to describe Jack Gallagher, imagine the VOD villains with with like rainbow tights. Imagine the VOD villains combined with Seamus. There you go. Boom. This was actually surprisingly awesome. Yeah, surprisingly good, but I feel like the wrong guy went over. I, I have to disagree with that. Like, so Jack Gallagher won with a corner dropkick of death. Yeah, seriously. Knocked him the hell out. Another example of why do we need guys like Apollo Crews, when you have Fabian Ackner, for a dude who is as beefy as he is, for as big as he is, he is a cruiserweight through and through. But like I'm telling you, man, we need Fabian Ackner, team him up with Apollo Crews, and make it a cruise swirl. No, would you call it the Harambe swirl? Oh yeah, the Harambe swirl. <laughs> That's fucked of you to say. It just happened like two days ago. I'm so sorry. Hashtag dicks out for Harambe. Oh my god. And then for the finals of round one for the CWC, we have Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa. I rate this match as if I'm doing ratings a thousand and one stars. How is this not on a takeover? Or a pay-per-view, or why wasn't this the fucking final? Are they facing um, the revival at Takeover? I have no idea, actually. I don't know if that's I don't because that match is like what two, three weeks away. Yeah, pretty much. So then let's have them fight for the titles before and lose, but then have Gargano and was it Champa fight at Takeover? There you go. That'd be awesome, like a rematch. This match was fan fucking tastic from start to finish. Yeah, seriously, from. From uh, Johnny Wrestling himself taking hard ass hits on the apron, and this I think like, Tommaso Ciampa has like great like his face tells a story. Like, yeah, really. It, like the whole match is like the whole thing's like, okay. They're friends, they're a tag team, but they like they're destroying the fuck out of each other. They're just, yeah, seriously. It's hard. It's it's vicious, and I'm I'm bummed out because like they wasted. It. This is not a first round match. Oh hell no! This was a takeover match. This was like a semifinal match. I don't see these guys fighting in the finals, but like semifinal at least. I don't see why this was a first round match, but then like Roman Reigns versus Rusev is probably gonna happen. Yeah, no, this they should have built to this one at least. Like it just wasted in the first round. I'm like, I'm not sad that I saw. It. I'm just sad that I saw it too early. Exactly. It's like seeing Batman versus Superman. They fight in the first five minutes. I, granted, that movie sucked either way. I didn't see it. It's not. It's not good. Nah. Well, then again, movies are subjective. Wrestling is not. I've been. I've been very depressed since Harambe, so I haven't really taken in anything new. See, I. I do the opposite. I try to get my mind off Harambe. Via shitty superhero movies. I miss Harambe. Harambe for WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Harambe for creative. So that was a. Yeah, that was a quick one, guys. But. Again, like the first, well, there's nothing too much to say. I mean, these yeah, are one-hour episodes. Exactly. Shit, a uh, shit happened, and we're probably going to be going more into this, into this, like probably after the round of sixteen. Yeah, definitely. Um, after the, because now we're down to from thirty-two to sixteen competitors. Are the matches going to go like they're going to have a, lo- a longer time limit? Do you think? Uh, probably. I can see that happening. Because as a, for the round one, they had twenty-minute time limits. That okay for I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit for the Ch- uh, Johnny Wrestling versus uh, Champa match. They the re- the um, announcers kept saying, "Oh, there's a 20 minute time limit." So I was terrified that they were going to reach that time limit and both were going to be eliminated. Yeah, exactly. Or that could have led to something in, in NXT. But you know WWE, they don't give a shit about the future. Yeah, I have to go look back at the bracket to see who um, Johnny Wrestling will be f- uh, facing against in the second round. Hmm. I be- I remember I saw it. I just can't remember. As of right now, I can't remember it too much. But yeah, we'll be back more um, later. Maybe like another two weeks. Yeah, totally. For a CWC, talking about um, getting into the first two episodes of round two. Mm-hmm. Um, be on the lookout for our SummerSlam edition. SummerSlam. Biggest party of the summer. Biggest party of the summer. And no, 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 no enhancement needed for this podcast. No enhancement needed, guys. And make sure to check out our Twitter, our Facebook, and our SoundCloud at B.5Gaming. Um, thank you guys very much, and we'll see you around. Bye, guys. Laters.